Welcome back to investingnews.com. We're once again speaking with Thien Chu from Invian Limited. Welcome, Thien. Thanks, John. Good to be back and good to you're, see you. You're welcome. Why is this new licensing agreement so important for the company? Yeah, it's actually been something we've been uh, we've been working on for a while, and um, really, what some of the big reasons behind it is it, it's both suboptimal and confusing. So, due to historic reasons, we had uh, uh, territories that were in Asia, excluding China, for cancers. We had uh, the license for owning other parts of the world, and even for infectious disease, we had North America, but not uh, you know not uh, not Europe, for example. Okay, that in itself loses most of our investors because it's just too com uh, confusing. And so um, what happened was our investors were getting distracted from what we really should be talking about, uh, which is a technology we have to treat multiple cancers that are already in multiple clinical trials. And on top of that, our technology has already been validated through both R&D partners like Peter Mac, as well as industry partners who are funding some of the research so what we needed to do was actually to establish global rights and really focus on the indications we care about. And um, that both expands the, uh, the size of our addressable market, as well as uh, helps uh, explain and signal to the market what are the indications that we really believe are important. So we sat down with a licensor and basically recut the world in a way that makes sense, expands our rights, and doesn't distract from the core, which is our technology, and having access to global rights in those target indications. And to also help investors understand, what are the key features of this agreement? Okay, well, firstly, instead of having bits of the world, um, for those target indications, we have global rights. And so that makes it very simple. And then we want to leverage um, our Photosoft technology as a platform technology. So no longer are we just looking at it as a single um, treatment for a certain type of disease, but we're looking at human cancers, in fact, multiple human cancers. We're now doing animal cancers, a pet pharmaceutical, so basically companion animal cancers. And we're also doing some infectious disease work as well. So, so now instead of being a one treatment, we actually are wanting to build this as a platform technology. And that's where partnerships will come in because we're still a pretty small biotech company. We, we can't do everything ourselves. But what we can do is um, build on partnerships of people who are uh, experts in their area. And we can leverage both their resources, expertise, as well as um, um, funding. And that's what we've been building on for the past one to two years. And this uh, license agreement helps us crystallize and realize those opportunities. Now, importantly, at the end, how much did this global license cost? Well, that's always the big question. So uh, the, the key thing here or key things are no cash is involved. And on top of that, alignment of interests with our uh, license source. So, so we're actually issuing uh, 36 million shares uh, over three milestones. So, so the third, mile, uh, third of the milestones is basically of those shares is essentially um, when we get this approved by shareholders. And then the subsequent two milestones are based on US or EMA IND enabled clinical trials that are either in phase two or three. Why is that significant? It signals now that instead of just doing you know, trials in Australia, um, we are targeting and focused on getting to the US, uh, which is really where the big market is. And on top of that, because these are spaced out over time and there's a 12, up, 12 month lockup, it actually means that um, the, uh, uh, the, the alignment of incentives as we reach, reach value added milestones then uh, gets shared both with the licensor as well as our shareholders. And uh, even the royalty is based on cash flow received by Invion ultimately when we uh, commercialize the, 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 the products. And um, as I said, it really aligns interests between ourselves and the licensor. So everyone's uh, incentivized to be successful. Just to help a sort of deeper understanding, what indications are covered in this deal? Sure. So we have uh, essentially uh, um, a number of indications that we are really focused on that uh, are global in nature. And we did this because um, everyone's got a reason 
And it could be because it's a large market. So for example, we have a number of cancer indications um, that, that, are, uh, that we're targeting. For example, lung cancer is the largest cause of death from cancer. So that's a very, very big need. Um, the other type of cancer that could be interesting for us is something like we looked at nasopharyngeal carcinoma, which is actually an, a, 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 um, uh, a cancer that is prevalent in Asia, but it's actually an orphan disease or rare disease in the US. So it's something where there could potentially be a faster path to market. But at the same time, uh, the unmet need um, uh, is actually quite large in terms of patient population. And um, also, we want to make sure that we're addressing a significant unmet need. So another type of cancer we're, we're focused on is glioblastoma, which is a brain cancer. And um, there's a lot of uh, it's got a very, very low five year survival rate. And uh, we believe that our technology potentially can uh, can make an impact there. And uh, we've also been uh, validated as well because one of our pharmaceutical partners, Hanlin Pharma, is funding a preclinical uh, program in glioblastoma as well. So if you look across the board um, here, we've got a number of cancers uh, where we have global rights, and you can see the list on the left-hand side. And uh, that also includes animal cancers or, or pet cancers. So we're, uh, we signed up with a, a pet pharmaceutical company to develop our, our technology for um, uh, essentially for uh, uh, for companion animals. And we're still continuing to look at infectious and other diseases. Uh, that includes the HPV virus, um, where we're working with a Korean company called Dr. INB. And at the same time, for infectious disease and atherosclerosis, we've actually preserved our prior uh, rights, which includes North America for infectious diseases. So how does this licensing deal now complement your current partnerships? Well, it just makes it simple. It makes the addressable market much larger for us, and it just makes it simple. So now we can deal direct with partnerships where we can say, hey, do you want to have full global rights to whatever indication? Let's talk. And it just makes a very, very simple process. So for example, we've talked uh, about Han Lim Pharma doing some uh, preclinical work in esophageal cancer, and glioblastoma, which is a brain cancer, we can have conversations as things progress where we can just talk to them about um, potentially uh, looking at global opportunities. Um, similarly with HPV and Dr. INB, similarly now with our protect relationship on companion animal cancers, um, it makes it simple. We can just say, look, you like what we have? Let's, let's uh, talk about a global uh, deal, for example. So I think that's what we want to progress so that we simplify um, things that matter to us and we expand globally. So it really just makes it um, simple and yet effective. So finally, Theanne, it's a really good milestone you've achieved recently. What should investors be looking out for on key milestones into the next six months? Well, part of the answer, John, is what shouldn't they be looking at? And, and unfortunately, and this is part of our history, is there was a lot of focus when you start talking about um, overhangs we've had over the past you know, a couple of years. We had a lot of shares outstanding. We had a complicated sort of financing structure uh, and we had a complicated licensing structure. So that has all been addressed now and it really has made it um, a no longer any issue which means that now investors can look at what we have even today. And even if you look at what we have today, we're in multiple clinical trials to treat multiple cancers. We've got a platform technology. And if you look at where our valuation is relative to peers, I think you can argue there's a fair bit of upside even on what we have today. Now, on top of that, that's just catching up to what we are today. The, the other thing is what else is coming? And these are the additional milestones that people might be able to look forward to. Um, obviously, we're continuing the work on the anogenital cancer clinical trial we're working with Peter Mack on, and that's going through the internal processes there. Um, we're continuing to uh, work on the non-melanoma skin cancer trial, and so we may have some more updates there. And we're also continuing our work on our partnerships and collaborations and that includes things like the work we're doing with Hanlin Pharma on the esophageal and the glioblastoma work, uh, as well as the uh, companion animal cancer work that we're doing with Protect uh, Animal Health. 
And we're also continuing to explore other collaborations uh, with partners. So a lot of things coming down the pipeline and now a lot of the shackles are off and uh, investors can now focus on what we have, not, not, not the noise that's been around it. Well, it was a very busy 2025. We look forward to 2026. Thanks again for updating Best Stay. Thanks, John. Look forward to it.